Hello and welcome back to Transmitting Until Robots Replace Us. My name is Drew and I'm glad that you are here. Today we are going to be talking about fox hunting or amateur radio direction finding. And while I don't have a ton of experience in this particular arena, I do have a strong desire to learn more. And that's what's going to guide me here today and for the next couple of videos where we dive into this topic and see what we can figure out. Now, I've tried to do quite a bit of research and I've been very interested in this particular aspect of ham radio for many years now. Uh, but what I found is that online, it can be really hit or miss in terms of whether there's anything good on this particular topic. So I'm gonna try and pull together a lot of resources that I've found and present it to you in a way that hopefully makes sense and hopefully is helpful in terms of getting you up and running with uh, ARDF or in this case fox hunting um, which I'm going to use interchangeably for the purposes of these videos um, so let's dive right in and the first uh, and the most probably the most easy way that I had of getting started with direction finding uh, and the creation of a fox hunt transmitter is through the use of my Baofang radio and, you know, just doing a little bit of research online, I was able to find a few different ways that people had created transmitters, beacons, from the, or using the, the Baofang radio. Uh, but again, they weren't always very necessarily simple in how they went about it. However, I did find one that was just that, quite incredibly simple. And it's through the use of this cable. Now, this is the BTEC K2 cable. Uh, it's for APRS. And this particular cable works perfectly to be able to connect your phone or an MP3 player, pretty much anything that takes a standard, uh, a standard jack. And then you're able to plug it right in and use it to transmit from. So let's take a look. So first of all, I'm just going to take this end here, plug it into my Baofang. And now I'm taking the 3.5 millimeter side and I'm going to plug it into my phone. Now on my phone, what I've done is I've created a playlist using iTunes or what's now Apple Music. And I've created a playlist just called Fox Hunt. And I've created two uh, audio files using voice memos as being the recorder for it, but you can use any program and really anything that will play a, a loop on either your phone or on whatever device it is that you're choosing to use should work absolutely fine. Uh, but I've created a playlist. One file is me just talking and just, you know, announcing and identifying the fox. And then the second is a minute long of silence. And so together, these two things will play and will, they'll play in a loop. And so they'll play over and over and over again until they're stopped or the battery is dead. Now, you know, phones generally, well, depending on how old they are, uh, may, you know, not last terribly long, which is where something like a power bank may come in really handy. Uh, so, you know, hook up a power bank to your phone uh, and put it on loop, make sure that all of the, the rest of the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, everything is turned off, and you should get some quite some time out of it. So let's just show you how this actually works. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip to the next, skipping off of the silence here, and back to Fox Hunt 1. And so uh, I have the radio, and just hitting play. And there you have it. And so for me, it's now playing the Fox Hunt Silence song, if you will, the, the uh, a song that just has nothing in it, really. And so even though the phone is playing it, the radio is not, because in order for the radio to actually transmit, it has to detect a, um, you know, an input over a certain threshold. And so what I have, and again, let me go through that, um, in order to transmit, uh, and in this particular way, you're going to need to use the Vox setting. And the Vox setting on your radio can be found by going to Menu, 
Then we're going to go to menu number, I think it's four. And then you're going to turn the Vox on and you're going to change it to a particular value that you would like to use. One is being the lowest threshold needed in order to activate the Vox. 10 is being the highest threshold, meaning it has to be the strongest possible signal in order to activate the, the Vox. And so once you have that turned on, so let me just go back there. I have right now have it set to four. Um, so, but if I wanted to, I could turn it down a little bit. So if I take it down to say two, um, and then I just save it, it's all set, it's ready to go. And it's really truly as simple as that. If you find that when you're playing your file back through the radio and it's cutting in and out, um, it may be because the signal strength coming out of your MP3 player or your phone or whatever device it is just isn't quite very isn't quite strong enough uh, to activate the Vox. So you could try two things: one, lower the um, lower the the Vox setting down to one or two. Uh, alternatively, you could re-record your message that you've you know used and played back and just record it at a higher level. Uh, so just speak more loudly into the microphone and it, even if it becomes modulated it'll still be understandable and you'll still be able to um, you know use it so there you have it i mean really it's not much more difficult than that i encourage you to stay tuned for more videos that are going to be coming out i think i have about eight or so different transmitter projects ranging everything from really really simple like this uh, up to more complicated ones where we start to get into uh, Arduinos and uh, relays connected to a Baofeng, uh, all the way up to completely self-contained items, uh, you know, getting into some more advanced ones with, you know, switches. Um, and then after we're done working through all kinds of different transmitters, we're going to go into using the offset attenuator and the, um, the step attenuators, and then finally end up with the uh, actual antennas. We're going to we're going to deal with at least two different types of antennas, a Yagi directional antenna and we're going to deal with a loop antenna. And so definitely be sure to check out those videos as well. So I hope that this helped. Uh, get out there, give it a try. It's fairly easy to do. Uh, total cost you're looking at for the radio, um, you know, $25, $30 ish or so. Then you're talking about for the cable itself, and this is again the Baofeng uh, BTEC APRS K2 cable, um, and that's about $25, so we're about $55 for that. And then, you know, an old phone, maybe? Something with a cracked screen? Um, you know, that maybe you have already lying around somewhere. Maybe a, a really old iPod that you could use. Um, so whatever it takes, but 55 to maybe $75 or so if you have to buy a new MP3 player from Amazon. So overall, not too bad. And especially if you already have some of these devices lying around, pretty easy to use. Bonus, the APRS cable that you're getting can double up for actual APRS. So when you're done using this as a fox hunt transmitter, then you can also you know, use it for APRS. So that's a win. There you have it. Thanks for joining me. Talk to you soon. Until then.